Hello again guys. I'm Elizabeth and I'm here again in my art loft. I'm ready to show you how I decorated the two-page journal. The, page, the journal was made from two pieces of scrapbook paper, one that had butterflies on the front and little vines on the back, and the other one had strange bugs on the front and beetles on the back. These two pages are pages from the Graphic 45 Flutter stack. The um, stack itself, you could purchase or you could purchase the pages individually. The stack looks like, oops, looks like this. Here it is. Graphics 45 Flutter stack. And if, of course, if you bought it in the stack, you would have a lot of other choices to choose from to make your journal. You could make it out of pieces of several different two-sided papers. That's why I use these, or it's because they're two-sided. And you can see that those are those two that we chose are a part of the stack. They're just ones that I had purchased separately in, in um, a single sheets. So the last time, if you remember, we made our the carcass of our book, as I call it, which had the front was the beetles, which is going to be covered up with a black piece of mat board. And then on the inside, we had a spread that had the beetles showing. When you turn the page, we had a very small pocket here, and then there was butterfly and beetles there. And the next one, we had the vines with the, with the uh, small pocket of the butterflies on this side. For the center spread, we had just the butterflies. The next page was just the vines again with a small butterfly closure, butterflies and beetles, and then back to the yellow page with all the different variety of bugs. Okay, so that was the beginning uh, of the book and what we, get, we got started with. So from there, what I usually do is I take my colorful design, which is the butterflies, and I go to my paper stack and I rummage through my paper stacks, the plain ones, and come up with all kinds of papers that might fit. So I look at that color and I say, well, does that work with this blue? Well, it sort of does, but not really. There, there is uh, that blue in this beetle. So you could use this blue if you want, but I didn't think it was close enough, so I took that one out of my um, set of papers that I picked up. You can always do everything in white or in off-white, but I chose not to use those as well. See the off-white matches his wings. It also matches kind of the flower there. These are the kind of cards, card stocks I'm using. They're from, um, it's called the Paper Com Company, Crafts and Creativities, and they usually come in 50 sheets per pack. This particular pack was a uh, baby girl color sheets, which are all pinks and very light colored things. I, I think of this as kind of flesh or peachy, and then of course the light pink and the light purple. I didn't use any actually from this particular set, but I have uh, greens and I have blues, and I've purchased those all on sale from Michaels uh, when you know I had a 40% off coupon, and I would just get you know a, a stack because I didn't have anything else that I wanted to pick up that day. Anyway, the ones that I came up with that I chose to use, I did not choose this one because it's a little, got a little too much blue in that pink. This one will work because it is the color of the light pink here, but I didn't use that either because it's kind of light for me and I wanted something a little brighter. I chose this pink because I feel like it goes best with that butterfly. I didn't choose the orange because I didn't really want orange in it, although it goes really well with the yellow and orange butterfly. This green is the same green that's on the beetles. The beetles here have this kind of a yellow green in their uh, legs and bodies and so on. And it's also the green that's kind of here. It's in that beetle there. So that I chose that green to use and that pink, and I like those two together. I also chose to use this green as well because the butterflies really have more of the grass green than they do the yellow green. So I chose two greens and the pink. I did choose a yellow. I started out with this yellow, which actually has a dot pattern on it. 
and that's good for some things but some things you just don't want the distraction of that those dots but I did choose and I used some of that and then for the rest of the yellows you can use this lighter yellow and I have like three different ones but unless you're using them right next to each other nobody's going to notice that they're three different ones and they all work with this because they are found in different parts of the butterflies that one's in the butterfly this one's like in the light part of that right there you can see and this one's kind of in this one so any of those yellows will work and this is the yellow that I actually like using because it goes really well with those colors you can see how that that works with all of those colors and then I wanted a blue so this yellow here is out because it was just a little too bright and kind of overshadows everything else if you use it. So I chose not to use that yellow. And the blue, I chose a, a, a really subdued blue because the background's kind of a subdued blue. And there are blues in the beetles as well. So this goes with either of these pages very well. And here's some pieces, parts of ones that I did. I already constructed one of these but I wanted to construct it on camera so that you could see how it actually turned out. Um, let me pick this up off the floor. I'm not supposed to be jumping out of here. I'll sit you over here so you won't get in trouble. Anyway, so those are the colors that I chose. So the first thing I do when I'm getting started with a journal like this is I pick a page to get started on. And you could pick any of them. But I usually choose the one that's got the big flap because... The first thing to do with that flap is just make it into an, a pocket. And the way to do that, of course, is to use a little bit of tape. And you simply tape along this edge. Oh yeah, one more thing. Before you get started, if you are interested in making these have um, a outline or a um, grunge look to it, whatever you want to call it, then you'll want to do that before you actually glue things down because it makes it a lot easier if you're going to make a flap to get this edge. It's easier to do when it's not, it hasn't uh, been glued down. For this I chose weathered wood. So the way that I do my inking is to actually use the pad itself. And then I go along and you can see that there's no more white on no more white on that edge. So I just go along each of the pages, front edge, and ink each of those. Come on, guys. And you can see that. Let's see how that's a little bit inked there. Let's see how that's inked. Okay, I've got some on the other side here. Do this one. And then anything that I add to it, I put some ink on as well so that it all looks consistent. And I like this weathered wood because it is a blue-gray kind of uh, look to it. And the blue-gray, I've decided, is the background color of these. Of course, you could say black is, and then you could use black as your uh, inking color. I just go along the tops and along the edge and the back. And if we had inked these before we ever put it together, it might have been a little bit easier too. But you can see that I actually got the back pretty well. It's not going to matter if there's a little bit showing there. Just go along the edge of these. Just use the, use the ink pad itself instead of getting one of those daubers. Come on, did I get you on the corner yet? Okay, a few more here, along that edge there. You can touch them up as you're, as you're creating things. You'll notice if there's, if there's white showing, you'll notice it. But I like to get as much as I can to start with so that I don't have to worry about looking for it. And you can actually do it after it's all finished too. I can show you ways to do your pockets even if, if you miss a pocket and you need to need to put a little ink on that there are ways to do that so don't worry if you miss a few places whoops am I getting it too out of frame again okay when I'm turning this over this could still be a little bit wet so I'm going to move my papers out of the way so that they don't get 
uh, inked by this top when I turn it over into the bottom. Oh yeah, one other thing that I get, I get a piece of vellum like this. This is a lightweight vellum or as, and or acetate to use for my pockets because sometimes you won't want to have a totally colored pocket. You'll want to have it uh, with a little, little bit of uh, visibility through it. Makes for more interest. Okay. This takes a little while, I apologize. I should have done this first, except for like two pages and then show you the two pages I do. But it won't be very long. Okay, this page. See how fast that goes. And it doesn't, it doesn't really get too much on the face of the page. It, well, you can if you want, but uh, when I'm doing it, I'm usually just doing the edges, and I get like a little line around it. It kind of outlines the page, and I think it just makes it look kind of more complete because when you have this little white on the edge, sometimes the white will show, and it'll look like something's there that isn't supposed to be there. Okay, so we're done with that. And we're ready to put down our pocket. Remember, putting on our, our double-sided tape. I'm using eighth inch tape because you don't really need anything thicker than that. Um, the, the, the tape itself and the, and the fact that it's become a pocket is going to hold your stuff so that it doesn't fall out of it. Plus, when it slides in from the side like that, then it's not going to have the chance of, <coughs> excuse me, of falling out the top or the bottom once you have your book closed. Cut off that little bit there. And put that down the trash. Okay, so to peel this, just peel it off. And since it is a square pocket, square to the to the page, I simply peel it off. Make sure this is tucked in in case it was a little bit over the edge of the of the uh, paper. And then we just push it down. Push it down and we have our first pocket. Okay, so for the other side of this page, I might choose to use a, a single color pocket or I might choose to do what's called a belly band. A belly band is a strip of paper that either goes this way or this way and then you tuck things under it. If we choose to use a belly band, we might use this paper which is lovely with the polka dots because it would give some, some textural interest as well as some visual interest to it. And when you use the yellow on this side, you have to realize that that's going to bring out the yellow in this. So when you use the yellow on this side, you're visually seeing more yellow over here than you would have seen if you say, use the green. When you use the green, then it's like, oh, I'm accenting the green. And you see the green a lot more. In this case, if I was using the green, I would use that grass green because it is more the color of the green over here. Actually, there is some of the yellow green in this butterfly right here. See right there next to his wing there? It's almost that color. Anyway, I'm going to use this color. And to do this, I usually like to have the grain of my paper running vertical. Now that means when you're curving your paper like this, it curves a lot easier along with the grain. If you're trying to curve it this way, you see it's harder to bend it. That means the grain of the paper is running in this direction. So I'm going to use a, a belly band, and I'm going to make it about, uh, I think I'll make it about two inches wide, two and a quarter inches wide. I'll be right back and chop it over here on my chopper. Two and a quarter inches. Line that up. And there we have it. So for interest on this, I might put little green stripes along the edge or whatever. And then another thing that you can do is you can use punches here. And I'm going to use this punch from Martha Stewart to make a... Let me make that six inches also. <laughs> Just a moment. The reason I'm making it six inches, of course, is because our journal is six inches tall. So, 
I'm going to use the Martha Stewart punch, and this is a nice punch because it's an all-over punch. That means you line up and have this butterfly wherever you want it on your paper. I'm going to put it in the middle first, kind of the middle, and I'm just lining that up. These are magnets which hold the, the other part of it, the actual punch part of it, to this. And when it's centered there, when it's centered in the uh, punch, then you just press it down and you get a hole in your paper and a nice little yellow butterfly to use for something else. So then I want to make another one and I'm going to make it above this one, one above this one and one below this one. We'll have three butterflies on this, on this belly band. Whoops, come on now, you scooted. I'll scoot you back up. So I want, I want the tops of these wings to be about this far from the from the bottom of that. So if I look through this and I see the tops of the wings like that, then I know it's in the right position. And if it hasn't moved side to side, which of course it did, so we'll move it back over there. We should have it about right. And there we have it. Another nice little yellow butterfly to use. And now I want the same kind of thing. So I want the bottoms of these wings to be close to the top here, but I want them to be virtually the same spacing as that. So I want to see about this much of the tops of those, of the bottoms of those wings. See where the metal is, is what I'm talking about. Hold your paper firmly, then we put it on there, and we punch again, and there we have it. The spacing slightly out, but it's really close. And this did have a little ravel as it did it. You see where it's got the extra little piece there? You just take your X-Acto knife and cut that out so that you don't have those extra little fluffies. That's because of it being the the um, polka dotted page, which has the polka dots. Maybe I need a new X-Acto knife here too. Anyway, it has the, the polka dots raised on that paper, so I think it just squished down some of those polka dots instead of cutting through them at the first part. I also need to make my knife a little tighter there. Come on. My knife, my knife blade fell out. <laughs> oh, everything's happening today. Anyway, back in there, you. And there we have... A beautiful yellow butterfly band to put one more time. You can do that with scissors if you've got some some of the detail scissors, but I prefer the X-Acto knife. It's easier. Okay, to ink the inside of these, if you want these inked like everything else is inked, the easiest way to do that is to have a piece of scrap paper. I'm going to use this and put it down. Let's get this out of the way. And then we get our dauber, which I've modified by trimming off the edges of that. And we turn it to the back of the page. And then we're pushing the ink into that. It's going up, and you see I'm kind of holding my dauber kind of up at an angle so that it will hit the edge of that. I know it makes lovely butterflies there, but you can see the edge of that has a little bit of the black, I mean, sorry, the, the blue on it, because your, your dauber is getting the edge of that when you're doing the uh, it from the back here. So holding it up, my ink pad's getting dry, but holding it up, the, the dauber at an angle so that it presses it, it hits that edge as, it's, as you're putting the ink on. And that will give you a nice little edging on the front. You just barely see that. See that how that has the blue on the edge of it? Can you see that? And no one will ever know that you did this from the back. They'll say, how'd you get all that ink in there like that? I won't tell them. Okay, so if we put this on, this little belly band on our page there, every time we put in a tag under it, a journaling card under it, 
then it's going to be difficult because it could hang up on these butterflies when you're putting something in there. So the best way to do that is to just add, get my arm in the way, is to add a piece of vellum underneath of that so that you have a, a smooth sliding place for your card to go in. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a piece, put tape around this, and then we're going to put it on that vellum, then we're going to cut it out and apply it to our page. And I usually put it along the edge, all the edges, because I want, you could use glue if you prefer glue, but uh, I like the tape, I mean the tape's just so easy to do, that's why I use the tape. And we don't even have to really worry about where we place it on the vellum because we can just uh, trim the vellum to the size of this um, belly band so that it will be the same exact size. So where you put it's fine. Although you could put it at the corner and save yourself a couple of cuts. Okay, and one more. You don't really have to glue down all this part because it um, it's not, I mean, you're not going to use it for anything. I guess if you if you put something really wild on the other side, then it could actually uh, catch in those butterflies, but probably you're not going to do that, so we're not going to worry about it. Okay, I'm going to take off this tape. Trash. And this tape. Okay, and I'm going to loosen this tape, but I'm not going to take it off yet. Come on, you. Okay, you were loose a second ago. Okay, I'm going to lay this down on my paper, on my paper, on my table. Line that up nicely. I'm going to take this off. It should go straight down that edge. And I still have this side to take off. Come on. There we go. And there we have it. Nicely done. Make sure that's nicely on there. And then we will trim this out. You can use your paper trimmer if you like, or scissors will work fine. Just have to trim along the edge of that yellow, which is pretty easy. And right along there. And then when we're making a belly band, of course, we simply put the tape on the top and bottom, center it on our page. But before we do that, what do we want to do? We want to ink the edges, of course. So back to our ink pad and just ink along those edges. If it's not giving you enough on the front, just kind of tilt your pad to the front and it'll give you a little more. There we go. Now, you could use other uh, pages that were in the, uh, the scrapbook pad that you had purchased, if you want to, instead of using all solid sheets of paper. I just am using the solid ones because I have them, and it's, I'm pretending I don't have extra ones, but of course I've got the whole pad there just to show you how easy it is to use just solid pieces of paper and to make it more interesting than just using solid pieces of paper. You can add, you know, stripes with this, or you can, you know, you can go back with your jelly pens or your, um, you know, your gel rollers or your Pasco pens or your technical pens or whatever and make marks on it to give yourself another uh, dimension to your work. Okay, so I just want to center this. Going to peel up, peel off this. Okay, peel off this. Going to center it on the bottom. And make sure it's up even at the top, and it is. And I'll peel off the bottom one. Put those in the trash so that they don't get in my way. And there we have a belly band. If you want to see how it works. This one's a little too tall, but hold your piece of paper, doesn't fall out. There you are. So now we have a pocket on this side, a belly band on this side. So 
What do we want to do next? Well, let's see. On this page, I look at that and I say, well, let's see. Maybe I want to do the middle instead. Yeah, let's do the middle first. Okay, so in the middle, if you look at this, you have a lovely diagonal from one side down to about the middle. That would make a nice tuck spot for your tags. So I had an extra piece of that. And where did I put it? Oh, here it is. Extra couple of pieces of this. So all I have to do is to make sure, if I make sure that this is exactly the same place that that was, then I can just cut a nice little, and I'm going to cut it kind of fussy cut along the butterflies. And I'll show you what I mean. Takes a few seconds to do a fussy cut, but not too long, really. Especially not with, with this kind of stuff. This is really nice. And we have it. Now, if we look at that, you can see that that's a little bit too wide. See, that's wider than our piece of paper there. So we want this to be chopped off so that we can add it to it. We want it to be chopped off right exactly there. Okay, so how can I figure out how to chop that off? Make sure I've got it just the right space. I hold this very tightly right there. And I turn it here. I'm going to use my pencil. Of course, I don't have a pencil. I'm going to make a mark with my fingernail right here. It should be a half an inch, I believe. We'll chop it off, and if it isn't enough, then we'll chop it off again. I'll be right back. Okay, and I didn't chop off enough. It's better to have it that you don't chop off enough than that you chop off too much, because if you chop off too much, then uh, <laughs> you'll know it. And this is one way to do it, is to hold that so that you could complete your butterflies there. And you see how much more we need to get rid of? We need to get rid of just an eighth of an inch. So let me go do that real quick. Now it's probably too much. <clears throat> nope, looks pretty good. Okay, so that fits perfectly. And when you glue that, you, when you add, add your tape along the edge of that, you really can't even see where that is. Although, we will put some um, ink along the edge so that we don't have the blue, the white marks, the white edges. And sometimes in this case, I'll give it a little bit more this way so that you get a little bit of a, a shadow, a glow to that edge from that ink so that you'll be able to see where that edge is. See how that, you can actually see where that edge is barely because I'm pushing a little bit toward me as I do this. Oops, wrong thing. <laughs> Won't get any ink out of the lid, that's for sure. Okay, so all the white marks, all the white's gone on that edge. So we'll do this edge on the on the ink pad itself. Looks lovely. And in this case, it's a tuck spot, not a not an actual pocket. So we only have two sides. We have to put our tape on this side. I 
try to put it as close to the edge without going over, of course. And then when I pull this off, I'm pull it off a little long, and then I'm going to use my scissors to trim that because I want that exactly to that point. There we have it. And along the bottom. Come on. And there we have that. You can't see that, sorry. Okay, so we have tape on both sides. When I get ready to put this down, I want to position it exactly. So I'm going to take my tape and pull it back like this. Take my tape and pull it back like this. Okay. So that when I position that, then it's not going to actually glue until I push those that corner down. So I'm going to position this along this edge, make sure it's along the edge, make sure it's along this edge evenly and exactly where I want it. Then when I press this corner down, then everything's stuck. Make sure this is still along this edge. Can peel this out, press that down, peel this out, and press that down, and we have a pocket there. A tuck spot. It's technically a tuck spot if it has just two sides, two or one side glued down, and it's a pocket if it has the three sides glued down. Okay, so we had a nice tuck spot there, and we'll decide later what color cards we want to put in there, journaling cards. Okay, so now, why don't you go over there like you're supposed to? Okay, so on this side, it doesn't have a really good diagonal. If I did that diagonal here, I'd have to be really fussy about these butterflies and around those. And I could do that, but I don't think I want to. So I think I'm going to do, I think I will do a regular pocket here just to show you how that works. A regular pocket would be, and since, since I like, um, I didn't finish that sentence, did I? A regular, <laughs> a regular pocket would come down like this a square pocket here or you could have a square pocket on the side and then you you could just uh, yeah I'll do it that way so I want to have this even with the edge of that and I'm going to do another fussy cut this time it's going to be pretty easy because I'm going around the edge of these butterflies And down along this butterfly to the edge of that. I'm going to keep that flower. And then I'll go around the edge of this butterfly and there. So that's going to be our pocket. It's going to be a three-sided pocket. And we want it to line up right like this.